Hello ladies and gentlemen, scare 4 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II BAFTA build tutorial. In this tour, we'll be going ahead and returning to our Japanese Navy, building the battleship Congo. Congo was a warship of the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War I and World War II. She was the first battle cruiser of the Congo class and among the most heavily armored ships in any navy when built. Her designer was the British naval engineer George Thurston, and she was laid down in 1911 at Barrow in Furness in Britain by Vickers Shipbuilding Company. Congo was the last Japanese capital ship constructed outside Japan. She was formally commissioned in 1913 and patrolled off the Chinese coast during World War I. Congo underwent two major reconstructions. Beginning in 1929, the Imperial Japanese Navy rebuilt her as a battleship, strengthening her armor and improving her speed and power capabilities. In 1935, her superstructure was completely rebuilt. Her speed was increased, and she was equipped with launch catapults for float planes. Now fast enough to accompany Japan's growing carrier fleet, Congo was reclassified as a fast battleship. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, Congo operated off the coast of mainland China before being redeployed to the 3rd Battleship Division in 1941. In 1942, she sailed as part of the Southern Force in preparation for the Battle of Singapore. Congo fought in many major naval actions of the Pacific War during World War II. She covered the Japanese Army's amphibious landings in British Malaya and the Dutch East Indies in 1942, before engaging American forces at the Battle of Midway and during the Guadalcanal Campaign. Throughout 1943, Congo primarily remained at Turk Lagoon in the Caroline Islands, Kerr Navy Base, um, and Sebespol Naval Base, and Lingla Roads and deployed several times in response to American aircraft carrier air raids on Japanese island bases scattered across the Pacific. Congo participated in the Battle of the Philippine Sea and the Battle of Lete Gulf in 1944, engaging and sinking American vessels uh, in the latter. Congo was torpedoed and sunk by submarine USS Sea Lion while transiting the Formosa Strait on November 21, 1944. She was the only Japanese battleship sunk by a submarine in the Second World War. So the Congo here is one of the most iconic Japanese battleships. It uh, has the very standard, typical pagoda mast style. This is done up in the configuration of what it will look like in 1945 or in 1944 at the time of its sinking, um, and uh, has that pagoda mast style. So that second uh, rebuild uh, of the vessel. So this is definitely not what it looked like when it first was built, um, as it was definitely more of a dreadnought type appearance. Um, it's a really cool looking ship, and I think just really symbolizes the Japanese Navy and their uh, warships and uh, really just the battleship core all together, as uh, the Congo is just such a beautiful battleship, I think. Um, now, with that, we can go ahead and dive in here to taking a look at the build, kind of going through all the little details for it and all that. This is going to be a redesign, so I did have a Congo um, a very long time ago on the channel. I think it was posted about four years ago, so uh, we are finally going back and redoing it. And let me just tell you, if you have the old model, you're going to want to get rid of it. This one is a much better model in comparison. With that, though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at Congo. We first have, obviously, the bow of the ship here. It has a very nice dreadnought appearance where it has kind of the uh, home mounted uh or the casemate guns, I should say, is the proper term. Uh, we then have turrets one and two, uh, located in this front section here uh, with your gun barrels. So again, two guns um, in each uh, turret. Then we have the pagoda mast uh, style here, superstructure. So again, very standard with Japanese battleships. All the different anti-aircraft guns, uh, you know, range finders, uh, gun directors, all that stuff located throughout this midship section, as uh, well as um, your different life rafts and all that. Uh, we have our first funnel there, as well as our rear mast. And then we have our second funnel on the back here. And again, we have uh, more of the gun directors and all that kind of stuff located right here and again we have again the secondary batteries of like five inch guns if I remember correctly five or six inch probably something like that all along the side here of the ship so uh, really good armament on it and then we have our uh, two rear turrets back here so again the Congo just a real mean uh, battleship for sure uh, something that can definitely pack a punch and uh, definitely has that really cool uh, World War or early, or I would say interwar uh, design 
um, but upgraded to fit the needs of World War II. So really cool uh, modified fast battleship. Anyways, though, that's going to wrap up this overview. Let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. All right, guys, so going ahead and move into our first layer here. We will be going ahead and starting off with layer number one. Now, a few things I do want to go ahead and mention before we go ahead and jump into this build. If you're completely new to my tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do basically layer by layer format. So what that means is we're going to be going ahead and building the bottom layer, and then the second, third, and so on and so forth. Um, kind of helps, I guess, make things a little bit easier, at least in my opinion, for especially tutorial the build, uh, but also for you guys building. Now, uh, with that, if you are planning on building the ship in the water, which I imagine most of you guys are going to want to do, layer one here is going to sit basically a block beneath the water surface. So the blue concrete here is representing that water level, and the red concrete is our start of our first layer. So definitely something to take, keep in mind uh, when you go forward with building this. Make sure you have it positioned properly in the water. Now the first thing we're going to do is going to be dependent again on what version you're on. If you're not on Java, so Bedrock or Pocket Editions or whatever, you're going to place down a red nether brick upside down stair. If you're not on, uh, if you're on Java, we'll place down a piston upside down like this, um, and we'll be using the debug stick later. So make sure you have access to the debug stick. We're also going to go and take a cache wood signs, and if you have the piston placed down. And only if you have the piston will you place down a cache wood signs wrapped around it. So again, if you have the stair, don't worry about the signs. After that though, we're going to take our red concrete and we're going to go ahead and go back from this block. So if we count this block right here, we have one, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 red concrete blocks back down the center. So all the way from that piston, all the way back, we should have 36. I can go ahead and grow quickly grab a um, wooden axe here just to go ahead and check the length, just to make sure everything's good. But yeah, right here we have a length of 36 red concrete blocks. We're going to go and then place down a red nether brick top slab on the back here and a case wood trap door. Now you may see on the original version here that I did use brick stairs, slabs, and walls. I'm going to be going ahead and substituting those out for red nether brick as it looks a lot better. And this ship was actually built before I started transitioning my holes over to red nether brick. So that is why um, the brick is over there. Um, after that though, we are going to go and skip a space. And we're going to go then place down two case wood fence gates like this. We're going to open the fence gates toward each other. And then we're going to place down a case wood sign on the sides here of these fence gates. So just like this to both sides. After that's all done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a red nether brick top slab coming off the sides here of this red concrete block, as well as a red nether brick upside down stair going forward from it like that. We're also going to go ahead and place down a lightning rod going back from those red nether brick top slabs, and we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves a birch wood uh, slab, and we're going to place down a birch wood slab that's going to uh, go back from these just like that. And once you have that all done there, that's going to be it for the back there. And we're going to go and continue our sides. So from this upside down narrow brick stair, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29 red concrete blocks forward. I'm going to go ahead and double check our count just to make sure I got that right. That's since I did have a little hiccup there. Uh, in the middle, and that's going to be 29 blocks in length, and we're going to do the same thing over here. So just like this, all the way to the front, or to this point right here. We're going to go and then place down two red nether brick walls, and we're going to go and switch over to our red stained glass panes, and place down two red stained glass panes coming off those walls like that. After that's all done, we're going to go ahead and then go back to our third red concrete blocks on the side. We're going to place down our red stained glass pane and a red nether brick wall. Same thing will be done over here on this side as well. We're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 red concrete blocks back. So in total here, this is again going to be 20. We're going to go ahead and then place down a line of two red nether brick ups and down stairs, a red nether brick top slab, and two lightning rods back from that, as well as a birch wood slab to go ahead and finish it off. Once that's done, over here on the other side, we're going to take our red concrete and do the same thing. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then two uh, upside down red nether brick stairs and a red nether brick top slab. As well as 1 and 2 lightning rods and then a birchwood slab directly after that. 
So it will look like this here on the back, like so. And then once that's all done there, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer one. We can go and delete the blue concrete blocks and all that. And this is what it should look like for the top down view once you have layer one all done. Uh, with that though, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number two. Moving into layer two for the build, we're going to start off by going ahead and placing our red concrete block on top of this one here. And then a red nether brick wall coming off that block. We're going to go ahead and build back one, two, three, four red concrete blocks, a red nether brick wall to both sides of this last block. And then we want to go and just place down one and two red stainless panes going forward from those walls. We're going to go, into, go, ahead, go ahead and then take our red concrete and go back from the walls. We're going to go back one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. To the sides, we're going to place down a red nether brick wall and then two red, or sorry, one red stained glass pane going forward. And same thing over here, red nether brick wall and a red stained glass pane block going forward. We then want to place down one, two, three, four, five, six red concrete, and same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Then uh, we want to place down two red nether brick walls that are going to be on the outside here, and we're going to go then place down two red stained glass panes going forward, and same thing will be done over here, two red um, nether brick uh, walls, and then two red stained glass panes after that. We're also going to go ahead and place down a case wood trap door here, and also below, below this glass pane, we're going to do the same thing. So over here. And over here and i did notice that i did forget to do a extra uh row out to the sides here on the sides for layer one so i'm going to go ahead and add that on now uh but basically for this we're going to go after this uh, trap door here two red stained glass panes two red or sorry it's going to be three red nether brick walls and then one two three four five six seven eight and uh eight red concrete and then one, two, three red nether brick walls and two red stained glass panes. And that's going to finish that row off. And we're going to do the same thing over here. So again, two red stained glass panes, three nether brick walls, uh, a row of eight of red concrete, three nether brick walls, and two red stained glass panes to go ahead and finish that bottom layer. Anyways, so once we have that filled in, we'll go ahead and resume uh, after these on this uh, second row here, or the second layer. And we're going to go back from the nether brick walls. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 of these blocks. And then same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Then after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and uh, then place down two red nether brick walls back. And we're going to go ahead and then place down two red stained glass panes. Same thing over here. Two red nether brick walls and two red stained glass panes. And then we're going to place down four blocks on the inside here of those walls and panes. After that's done, we're going to continue on with one and two more blocks back. So one and two more. A red nether brick wall again to both sides and two red stained glass panes going back from those walls. Then on the insides here, we're going to place down three red concrete blocks. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a fourth one like that back. Then two red nether brick walls back like so and then two red stained glass panes. In the middle here between the walls and glass panes, we're going to place down a row of four red concrete, as well as one more block that goes back like so. And then we're going to place down a red nether brick wall and a red stained glass pane to go ahead and finish that off for the back there of the ship. And with that all done there, that's going to wrap up everything we have here for this layer. Here again is a top down view of what that should look like from up above. The optional thing to do also is to go ahead and fill in the inside here of the ship. For me, I'm going to go ahead and do this kind of quickly here um, but it's something that I personally like to do I think it just makes things a little bit easier um, to have this completely filled in uh, for each layer but again that is up to you guys something you don't need to do I showed you how to do the basic outline and you can fill the inside in if you choose to anyways though that's going to wrap up everything we have for layer number two of the build and with that we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number three moving into our next layer we have layer number three for layer three to start with we're going to place down a stone block here on top of this wall up here in the front and then we're gonna go ahead and go back one two three four more stone blocks back we're gonna place down an andesite wall to both sides of this stone block as well as two light gray stained glass panes going forward from those walls after that's done we want to go ahead and then place down one two three four five stone blocks back and one two three four five uh, we're going to go then place down an andesite wall here to this side and two light gray stained glass panes same thing over here andesite wall and two light gray stained glass panes we're also going to go ahead and place down a uh, iron trap door to both sides here. And for this trap door, we are going to be going ahead and using a tool that's going to be Java exclusive. This is going to be uh, got, uh, retrieved by typing the command slash give space at P. And it's going to be, uh, you can just type in debug 
and should kind of be right there. Press tab autofill. Uh, we have slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. Press enter will give you this glowing stick here and you can go ahead and left click this iron trap door to get selected open false and right click it to set it to true and it will sit flat against the side of the ship. Now this is something that you don't need to include. Um, you definitely can go without it. And if you do end up going without it, um, and you don't have the debug stick, I'd recommend probably just placing down a polish black stone button in its place because we're going to place down a polish black stone button here on both sides of the block in front of it. Anyways though, after that's done, uh, we're going to take our stone and we're going to go ahead and build back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So like that, and same thing we done over here on this side. So we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Back just like that. Once uh, that's all done there, we're going to go ahead and uh, go back up here to this section on top of this trap door. We're going to place down another iron trap door, one after it. Again, same thing that we did before. Um, you can go ahead and just uh, disregard them if need be. Um, there's virtual trap doors that are also a decent alternative, but... Uh, they don't really blend too well with the build and something that, again, you could probably just go without. So, again, we have the iron trap doors there, and then we're going to place down three like racing West panes going back from those trap doors. We're going to go then take our inside walls, and we're going to build a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 uh, of these inside walls back. And same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So, just like that. And then we're going to place down a line of three of glass paint so you have three and three and then we're going to place down two iron trap doors close them like that again using our debug stick and then after that we're going to go ahead and place down two inside walls that go back from the stone then two like gray stainless panes again two walls two glass panes and then we're going to place down one two three four five six and seven stone blocks on the inside here and same thing on the on this side as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, one thing also real quick I'm going to adjust here is actually behind these walls here. I'm actually going to place down some stripped oak wood. And I'm going to go ahead and also place it in the middle here and also right over here. This right here is where we do start to have some of our back decking pop up. So this uh, portion right here is where I would recommend starting to include that. And in the middle here, we're just going to go ahead and place down... Our stripped oak wood as well so just fill in that center line in we're gonna go ahead and then place down a uh, another stripped oak wood block that goes back like this then it's gonna be a glass pane to both sides and then we're gonna place down a stone block and again a glass pane to both sides and then an andesite wall um, or rather sorry actually just one more stone block and then a andesite wall on the very end there to go ahead and create the, the um, stern of the ship and then at this point, that's going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for um, this layer. Again, here is kind of a top-down view of what it should look like outline-wise. I would also, again, you can go ahead and fill the inside in here with stone if you so choose to. Um, for me, I'll go ahead and just kind of fill this in quickly. Um, again, just kind of personal preference on this one. Um, so there we go. I have that filled in, and this is what it looks like um, with that layer complete. Anyways, though, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number three. With that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, we're going to go ahead and start off by placing down a stone block here, and then a stone upside down stair coming off that stone block. We're going to place down an item frame, and then a block of gold in the item frame, rotated sideways. We then want to go ahead and take our birch wood signs, and we're going to place them on the, side, on the sides here of these stairs, like so, and then also on the front here of the stair, so it will look just like that. After that's all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a, another stone block behind this, and then two light gray stingless paints to the sides of these second and th or these uh, two stone full blocks. Then we want to go ahead and place down two andesite walls back along the sides here, and then we're going to place down a stone full block as well to both sides. From the stone full block, we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, and six blocks, and same thing over here, one, two, three, four, five, and six blocks back. Um, in the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and just fill this in with the stripped oak wood. I would also try to recommend that you try to keep this oak wood all going in the same direction just to kind of keep that grain uh, looking proper. As you can see, if you kind of mix it up a little bit, it looks a little weird and funky, but just try to keep it all going in that same direction. Um, then we're going to go ahead and place down a, a stone brick wall that's going to be right here on both sides of this last stone block with an end rod coming off it pointing forward. We're also going to go and take polished black stone buttons. We're going to place down three buttons here 
along the sides. And again, if you're on Java, we'll place down a iron trap door here to both sides. And we'll also go ahead and dig our debug stick and right click it like that, lay it flat against the sides, as well as another polished blackstone button on both sides of these blocks here. Also, while we're at it with the front of the bow, I do want to go ahead and also turn our attention back to the piston, again, for my Java players. We're going to left-click this till we get selected extended false, and right-click this, go ahead and set that to true, so it gets rid of that wood portion. After that, we want to go and then take our stone, and we're going to place down a row of three, or sorry, row of five of stone that goes all the way across this space, and actually, we're going to go and do a, first off, a row of three of stripped oak wood, and then a stone block to both sides. That looks better there. Then uh, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves a stone stair. We're going to place down a stone stair here to both sides. Again, we'll place down a row of three of stripped oak wood across that center space. And then we're going to place down a stone brick wall to both sides with a stone block on the insides and then again a stripped oak wood block in the center there. We then want to go ahead and place down an end rod that's going to come off this wall and kind of go at an angle like this so it kind of faces a little bit of an angle out to the sides. It's not just perfectly sticking straight out or straight forward. Uh, next, we're going to go and take our stone, and we're going to go back from the wall right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 stone blocks. And same thing over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're going to go ahead and then fill in the space in between those rows with just solid oak wood stripped blocks to go ahead and create this decking. So again, that's going to fill in all the way like that. And then after that is done, we're going to go and then place down a stone brick wall on top of this wall here. And rod that goes forward from it. And same thing over here on this side. So this is this third stone block back. And again, we have the end rod pointing forward. Behind that, we're going to place down two light gray stained glass panes, another stone brick wall, and another end rod. And then we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane, stone brick wall, end rod. And then again, a light gray stained glass pane, stone brick wall, and an end rod like that for the guns on the sides. Again, two light gray stingless panes here, stone brick wall, end rod back, light gray stingless pane, stone brick wall, end rod back, light gray stingless pane, stone brick wall, and an end rod back, just like that. Once we have uh, that done there, we're going to go ahead and take our stripped oak wood and we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 blocks down the center. And we're going to go and take our stone full blocks and run it along the side there of those 9 stripped oak wood blocks. Then we're going to place down a stone brick wall here in the corner with an end rod that goes back. Same thing over here, stone brick wall and an end rod that faces backwards. We're going to take our oak wood pressure plates as well as some polished diorite slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four of these pressure plates of oak wood. And then we're going to place down two diorite slabs and same thing over here, one, two, three, four, and two diorite slabs. Then we're going to place down two oak wood pressure plates that go back from those slabs just like that. We're going to go and then place down a stone block in the center, a light gray stingless pane to both sides of that stone block. And then we're going to place down two more stone blocks here down the center as well. On the sides of those stone blocks, we're going to place down two andesite walls. This is going to be the start of our turret number four here on the back. And then for my Java players, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a piston that's going to be on the front here. If you are not on Java and don't have access to the debug stick instead of the piston, I would recommend probably a stone stair. So your stone stair would look something like this uh, sitting here of that block. Then on the sides of the piston, we want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull to both sides, and we're going to go ahead and then place down two birchwood fence gates coming off the piston going forward, and we're going to open these fence gates toward the piston like so. We'll also go ahead and take our debug stick, and we're going to go ahead and right click that piston for my Java players just to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion on top and finish that turret there. We then want to take our oak wood pressure plates, we're going to place down a pressure plate to both sides of the fence gate here, as well as two on top of these blocks here. And then on the very back of the ship for this kind of little mass, we're going to place down a end rod and then a uh, iron bar on top of it to go and finish it off. Anyways though, that right there is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number four of the build. As you can see, we're starting to get this hole coming together and the next layer is going to be pretty chaotic. We have a lot of stuff to cover in the next one. So there's going to be a lot of things going on, but this is what it should look like from the top down view with that all complete there. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, we're going to go and place down an end rod on top of this stair here, and then an iron bar directly behind it. We then want to place down a redstone repeater, separate the notches from each other like so, and we're going to go and place down one, two, three of these, uh, basically, uh, end rod, or the the uh, redstone dust that goes back, couldn't think of the word there, and then a redstone repeater directly after that. 
We're gonna go ahead and then also go ahead and grab our birchwood fence gates. We're gonna place down two fence gates and open these toward the rear, going back from that um, repeater. And we're gonna go ahead and place down a piston directly behind it. Again, it could be substituted for a stone stair. That would be facing this direction here if you're not on Java. Then we're gonna place down two stone blocks and to the sides of the stone blocks, we're gonna place down two andesite walls to both sides. And we also wanna place down skeleton skulls coming off the sides of the piston, just like that. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a andesite wall that's going to be sitting right here. And we will actually swap out this stone stair for a stone upside down stair. So uh, we're going to go and do that like this so that we don't have that connection of that wall to the stair. Or So it kind of creates a little space there. And then to the sides of this, we're going to go ahead and place down a light gray stained glass pane to both sides. We're going to place down a uh, stone block in the center here. And then we're going to place down a andesite wall to both sides of that stone block. We're going to go ahead and then take our stone and we're going to place down a row of three across, then a second row of three, a third row, and then a fourth row. So you have four rows of three that go across. Then we want to take our light gray stained glass panes. We're going to place down two glass panes here on the sides, two on this side, and then an oak wood pressure plate on top of those stone blocks there. After that is all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, stone brick slab that's going to sit here on the right side a birchwood fence gate coming off that slab opened up toward it and then a skeleton skull like that and on the other side here we're gonna do the same thing so stone brick slab birchwood fence gate and a skeleton skull like that after that is all done we're going to go ahead and then place down a andesite wall in the center here and that's going to be followed up with a light gray stained glass pane to both sides there we're going to go and then take our stone we're going to place down a stone full block directly there in the center, and then a birchwood fence gate that's gonna come off both sides of the stone full block opened up toward it. We then also wanna go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair that's gonna come off this fence gate, just like that to both sides. And going back from the stair, we're gonna place down one, two, three, diorite slabs and one, two, three on the other side. Taking our stone, we're gonna build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 stone full blocks here down the center. Now, going back up to this forward section, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some of these scaffolding blocks, and we're going to place down two of these scaffolding on both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down two light gray stained glass panes after the scaffolding, and then we're going to go ahead and switch over to our andesite walls, and we're going to build one, two, three, four, five andesite walls back, and one, two, three, four, five. We're going to go ahead and then place down two more of these scaffolding blocks here, a oak wood trap door, and then two more diorite slabs, and same thing over on the other side, um, just like this, and like that. So again, same thing on both sides. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod that's going to go on top of this stone brick wall here, as well as two end rods on top of this glass pane and this stair, or this that wall, sorry. And again, same thing on both sides. Um, after that's done, we're going to place down another oak wood trap door here to both sides. And then after those walls, we're going to place down one and two glass panes, uh, like gray, of course. And then we're going to place down two inside walls after those glass panes. We'll continue this on by going ahead and placing down a, another piston. Again, you can substitute this for a stair if needed. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull to both sides of this, um, this uh, piston. We're going to go ahead and then place down our birchwood fence gates going forward from it and we're going to open those fence gates toward the piston and then use our debug stick to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. Then on the back here, uh, we're going to place down a skeleton skull that's going to sit on top of that stone block, uh, or actually this stone block right here. We're going to place down an end rod like this going forward and an end rod going back as well as a redstone repeater with the notches spread apart on top of this stone block here. We'll also take our oak wood pressure plates and we're just going to place them down on top of these four stone blocks on both sides just to help kind of blend the deck color in a little bit better. And once we have that all done there, that is going to wrap up everything we have here for this layer. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything appears to be pretty solid and good to go. Um, we can also do the same thing up here to this piston on our forward turret. We can just give a little right click and get rid of that. And also I'm going to take my oak wood pressure plates and place them on the side or on the tops here of those stone blocks as well. Um, also, when it comes to the front of the ship up here, I am going to go ahead and grab some item frames and some black beds. I'm going to place down an item frame that's going to go right here on these um, these uh, uh, light gray stainless panes. And I'm going to go ahead and place down a black bed like this that's kind of out to the sides, like so. And then I'm also going to place down an item frame 
underneath them. That's going to stay right here, and I'm going to go ahead and put the anchors on the ship. Um, so for this, I'm going to go ahead and place down a crossbow in that item frame, rotated downwards to go ahead and represent the anchor. And same thing over here. So just go ahead and make sure you get, get that added on to the front of the ship. Um, anyways, though, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number five of the build. As you can see, you're really starting to get a lot of the superstructure coming together, and we're uh, grinding out the rest of the ship. So uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a piston on top of this block here, and we're going to place down two fence gates in front of the piston, and we're going to open them up toward the piston itself. Again, you can substitute that out for a stone stair. We're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on the sides of this piston, as well as two stone blocks back from it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and place down our inside walls to the sides of those stone blocks. We're going to place down another stone block here in the center, which will be followed up with a light gray stained glass pane to the sides of it. And we're going to go ahead and then place down another two stone blocks down the center with two inside walls to the sides of those. We're also going to go ahead and place down a um, end rod on top of this slab. So it's just going to go straight up like so. And then we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off these two walls here, as well as a stone upside down stair here in the center. After that's uh, all finished there, we're going to go ahead and place down a cobweb that's going to go directly here in the center, and then a stone brick top slab to both sides of that cobweb. Um, we're going to go ahead and also place down a lever that's going to sit on top of this stone stair. Now, if you're on Java, we're going to place down an item frame underneath the lever, just kind of help create that defensive position. And unfortunately, you can only place down levers and item frames in the same block space on Java. With that, we'll also place down a item frame on the side of this stone brick top slab if you're on Java. And we can go ahead and fit in a snowball into that item frame there for some uh, spotlights there. So again, just something we can add in there if you're on Java. Unfortunately, if you're not, you'll have to disregard those item frames. After that's all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate coming off the cobweb and opened up toward it. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some white beds and we're going to place down a white bed on top of the scaffolding to both sides. In this middle space here, we're going to place down a andesite wall and then a stone block back from that andesite wall. And we also want to go ahead and place down a fence gate that's going to sit on top of this slab, which we're going to open up toward the outside of the ship. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull that's going to come off the side here of that, like this. And the same thing will be done over here on this side as well. So just like that. After that is all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down another fence gate here in the middle, open up toward the stone block here for the funnel. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four stone blocks down the center. Now, once we get to this point, uh, we're going to place down two andesite walls in this space here to both sides. We're also going to go ahead and place down a stone brick slab that is going to sit on top of this scaffolding. And we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on the side going forward. And then a birchwood fence gate on the side of the slab and open it up toward that slab just like that. Then we just want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull here to both sides coming off those walls. And we're going to place down another stone block to both sides here and another skeleton skull going back like that. After that's all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down a andesite wall right here. And we're going to go ahead and then build two stone blocks back from that andesite wall like so. On the side of these stone blocks, we're going to place down light gray stained glass panes. So just like that. And then we're going to go and take ourselves some iron trapdoors. And we're going to place down a row of three of iron trapdoors um, across the top there of that turret like that. And once you have that all done there, the very last thing we're going to go ahead and do is going to be more of a Java feature only. I say more of, but it really is solely a Java feature. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go and grab ourselves some levers and some blocks. We're going to place down two blocks on top of these, um, these slabs here. So just like that. And we're going to place down levers on the side of these blocks. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go and take our debug stick, we're going to left click them until we get selected face, should say wall, we're going to right click these, set these to floor, and what it's going to do is it's going to put these uh, these levers on top of those end rods. So just kind of a nice way to um, kind of create some of the, um, you know, crane action for deploying these lifeboats and stuff like that. That's solely what we're trying to create there. Anyways though, that is going to be it for that, and that's going to conclude everything for this layer. We can also go ahead and just use our debug stick on this piston up here in the 
on that front turret as well to get that done. Anyways though, that's going to conclude layer 6, and with that we'll be moving on to layer number 7. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 7. For layer 7, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an andesite wall that's going to go on top of this space here. Um, or actually, sorry, my bad, it's going to go on top of this block, so right after your first turret. We're going to place down an item frame here on the forward side, and then a black bed sideways in it, like so. We'll also go ahead and grab ourselves a birchwood sign, and we're just going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of it as well if you're on Java, to go ahead and just kind of blend it in a little bit better with the ship. We're also going to go ahead and place down a uh, iron trap door on top of those walls, like that to the sides there. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down a stone full block behind this wall. And we're going to go and then follow that up with a stone upside down stair that's going to come off the sides of that full block. Then behind that, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves some birchwood fence posts. And we're going to place down a birchwood fence post on these two sides here and then a stone block in the center. Coming off the fence post on top of those um, end rods, we're going to place down a stone brick slab to both sides. We're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves iron trap doors. We're going to place down an iron trap door going back from those fence gates there. And we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, item frame on the side here with a snowball in it. And same thing over here on this side as well. Then uh, once we have that all done there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, another iron trap door that's going to be in the center there. And that's going to have a birchwood sign uh, coming off of it. So I can just go ahead and grab it over here real quick. And we're going to place down a birchwood sign. We're also going to place down a lever here. Um, and then a item frame. And same thing over here. Lever and an item frame if you're on Java. Then uh, we're going to place down a stone upside down stair. That's going to come off that sign. So on top of that fence gate there. Another andesite wall that goes up. And an air stone block that goes up as well. A skeleton skull on both sides of this first wall. And then we're going to place down a fence gate here. And a skeleton skull on both sides of that fence gate. Going up as well. Then uh, we want to go ahead and place down a stone uh, upside down stair, or actually sorry, it's going to be an andesite wall, my bad, on top of this block like this, and we're going to have a stone brick top slab to the sides of it. So one and one like that. And we'll also go ahead and grab ourselves our oak wood pressure plates and just place it down on top here at this block. Then uh, we want to go ahead and place down a top slab that's going to go back like this here and then a stone full block, and then an andesite wall that connects us up to this rear funnel. We're also going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull that's going to come off the side of this block, and then kind of off of that skeleton skull to fill in this space there. We'll delete that first skull, and same thing over here will be done as well. I'm also going to go ahead and take a lever, place it on the side of this block, and flick it downwards to connect up to that skeleton skull beneath there, and um, all that. This is going to create start of our, the start of the basically building of the mass right here um, that goes up and actually this pressure plate we're going to delete and we're going to actually swap that out for a skeleton skull instead so uh, just go ahead and make that quick change there and um, sorry about that then uh, for our next section here we're going to place down a gray shulker box um, on top of this space and then for my java players we're going to place down a piston on top of these glass panes if you're not on java and don't have access to the debug stick i'd probably recommend just some stone brick slabs as an alternative and then in that middle space between the pistons uh, we're going to place down a redstone repeater and just separate the notches from each other like so. Also on these pistons, we're going to go ahead and place down a tripwire hook there to the sides. And we're going to go ahead and then right click them like so and get rid of that wood portion there to go ahead and complete that design there um, for those pistons. So that's it, just some gun directors and stuff like that on the back of the um, of the ship. So that's it for that. Um, as for the rest of things here, we do have some iron trap doors we're going to throw in, come off the side of this upside down stair here. Uh, but other than that, that's going to basically be about it um, that we have to throw on. Um, if you're on Java, we do have some extra little bits that are going to be on the front here coming off these stone brick slabs. And really all we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and just place down some blocks. We're going to leave a space of one from the slab. So we're going to go out to the side of the air like this. And right here, same thing over here on this side. And like this. So we have a space of one there on the sides. On the sides of these blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down trip our hooks. And we're going to go ahead and take our debug stick, left click it till we get selected facing, and just rotate this around till it comes off the side of the slab. Same thing will be done over here on the other side. Just like this. And that right there is going to finish those little gun directors there on the sides of the ship. Um, anyways though, that's going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number 7. And with that, we'll probably be going ahead and moving into our final layers. So um, let's go ahead and finish off the rest of the ship. 
All right, guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers eight through 13. Before we go and jump into those, one thing we're gonna add to layer seven here is gonna be a skeleton skull to both sides of this wall. So just make sure that gets transferred over. Anyways though, continuing on, uh, we're gonna place down a stone upside down stair right here, and then that's gonna be followed up with the skeleton skull to both sides of that stair like that. We're gonna go back from the stone stair with a stone full block and then a second full block behind it. We'll also place down a lever that's going to be on top of this stone upside down stair with a item frame underneath it. So like that again to both sides. Um, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a piston that's gonna go right here on top of these um, fence posts. And we're gonna go ahead and then place down a trip bar hook that's gonna go back from it. And instead of uh, a piston here, I'd probably recommend like a stone brick stair or something with the back of the stair against this stone block. And I would recommend you wouldn't be able to place down these trip bar hooks. So you can just disregard them at that point. Um, anyways though, once that's done, we're going to place down a narrow stone block, or rather actually an andesite wall that goes up this center space here. And we then want to go ahead and place down a stone brick slab that's going to be above the pistons like that on both sides of the wall. We're going to place down a narrow stone block that goes forward and then a skeleton skull to both sides, as well as a light gray stainless pane coming off that stone block like that going forward as well. We then want to place down a smoker on top of this glass pane. And we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull to both sides of the smoker just like that, as well as a narrow stone block in the center and an inside wall to both sides like that. Um, in this middle space, we're gonna place down a stone stair and then we're gonna place down a stone upside down stair like so. We'll also grab ourselves some birchwood fence gates. We're gonna place down two fence gates that go back down the center and then we're gonna place down two fence gates that come off this uh, upside down stair kind of at an angle like that going back. So again, same thing here on both sides they're like that. Then on the very top, uh, we're gonna place down a stone block. This is gonna be followed with a birchwood fence gate to both sides and then a skeleton skull coming off the fence gates. We're also gonna go ahead and place down a stone brick slab on this forward side and then a skeleton skull on both sides of the slab as well as a birchwood sign coming off the front here. On the back side, we're gonna place down a glass pane. So, grab one here, we're gonna place down a glass pane, and then again, a skeleton skull to the sides there. And then we just wanna go ahead and place down a daylight detector on the very top and turn it to that night mode. So that's gonna conclude the top there of the ship. Um, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and do this forward cabling uh, for the ship, and this can be obtained, we're gonna be using invisible blocks. So this right here is called a barrier block. On Java, they can be obtained by typing the command slash give at P, you can just type in barrier and press enter and you'll get this basically invisible block. Um, they're also known as uh, structure blocks, I believe on pocket edition or not pocket edition, but bedrock. So if you're on bedrock, you can go in and uh, search how to get those. Uh, but to do, to do these pretty simple, we're gonna place down two blocks. They're gonna come off this smoker and then we're gonna go and drop down and do a row of three that goes forward. We're gonna drop down again, do another row of three and then again, drop down, do a, another row of three and then drop down and do a row of two. So it's gonna basically look something like that going down. So we have our we have our two two blocks up here. And then we drop three, 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 and two. We're gonna go ahead and grab some stone buttons and we're gonna place down a stone button on the side of this first one, then on top, bottom, side, top, bottom, side, top, bottom, side, top, and bottom and side. So it's just gonna go like that all the way up and it's gonna basically form that cabling there. And we're only gonna have the buttons on one side. We're not gonna do it on both sides, though you could if you really wanted to. Uh, once uh, that's all finished there, we're gonna go ahead and also take our debug sticks and we can just go ahead and give these pistons right here a right click to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. Now we're also gonna go ahead and take our barrier blocks and we wanna go ahead and place down a barrier block in between these uh, trip bar hooks and then up and angle here and connect them up to this fence gate here. And then also uh, we're gonna place down a barrier block underneath this section here and then coming off this trip bar hook. So it's gonna kind of create an angle here and connect up to those, those fence gates. So it'll look like that. Button wise, we're gonna go ahead and place down buttons on both sides of this block here. And then on the bottom of this one side, over here on the same thing, the other side we're gonna do the same thing. So just like that. And this mid section here is gonna be just done like that going up and buttons on both sides of this last one right there. And we'll also go ahead and place down a iron bar that's gonna go on top of this um, 
on top of this barrier block right there. So it's going to kind of create the cabling there for that um, tri mast you have going on in the back. Once uh, that's all finished there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood fence gate that's going to go on top of this stone up sound stair. We're going to open that up toward the back like so. We'll place down a lever to both sides and again an item frame underneath it if you're on Java. And try not to activate those levers because you will cause the um, trap doors to open. So just be careful with that. We're going to go ahead and then place down another stone block that goes up and then an andesite wall. We're going to place down an item frame on the side of this andesite wall here. And then in that item frame, we're going to place down a snowball. After that, on the very top, we're going to place down a uh, polished blackstone slab and then a zombie head or a wither skeleton skull like so. Then we're going to go and drop back to our rear funnel. Uh, we're going to place down an andesite wall on top of this one and then a stone block. And then we just want to place down a polished black stone slab and then a uh, black wither skeleton skull on top there to go ahead and complete the rear funnel. Now for our rear mast, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some fence posts, um, some end rods, some zombie heads, some chains, uh, andesite walls, and fence gates, levers, and a iron bar and that should be what we need for the time being but we're going to place down a fence post that's going to go on top of this wall right here as well as on top of these two skeleton skulls we're also going to place down levers on these stone brick top slabs to the sides there we're going to place down another fence post that goes up and we're going to have a fence gate on this side here of the fence post and open the fence gate up toward the fence post itself and then on top of that we're going to place down a andesite wall with two end rods out to the sides of the andesite wall then we want to place down a fence gate on top of this wall and open it up toward the front, as well as a iron bar on top of that fence gate. We're going to go ahead and then place down a, a barrier block that is going to go up from this uh, iron bar. So it's going to go up like this, and we're going to place down a iron bar to both sides of that barrier block like that. We'll also place down a button on both sides here of that uh, barrier block like so. Now we're going to go ahead and then go underneath this... Um, iron bar we're going to place down a uh, end rod and we're going to go and then place down an iron bar or an end rod to both sides of that end rod and then going ahead and connecting it together you have the option to either place down a wither skeleton skull here however for my java players we're going to go and do something i think that connects a little bit nicer and we're going to do a lever connection with our debug stick so we're going to place down a lever right here on the side of this block left click this till we get selected facing and rotate it around till it comes off the fence gate then, after that is all done there, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull here on this back side of this uh, andesite wall. And then going forward from the andesite wall, we're going to go ahead and grab some chains. And we're going to place down a chain that goes forward. And then a skeleton skull, and then a chain that goes down from that skeleton skull. We're going to go ahead and go off the chain with a skeleton skull here. And then we're going to place down an end rod that goes down like this and connects the two together to create this crane in the mid deck section. After that is all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and then just focus solely on getting the rest of our cabling done for the build. So for this, we're going to start off by taking our barrier blocks and we're going to build a row of uh, barrier blocks that's going to connect uh, these section segments together. So it's going to be two, or sorry, it's going to be three, and then it's going to go out to the side here, two, and connect up to those, um, to those uh, fence gates. Same thing over here on this side. And we're going to take our uh, stone buttons, place down three stone buttons here, and then two on the inside. Same thing over here, two on the inside, and then three on this side. So it will look like that there. Our next uh, segment here, barrier blocks, we're going to go ahead and uh, place down a button on top of these ones here. And then we're going to go and go up from the button and kind of back at an angle going on the inside here. And then we're going to go and place down a button on the side of those barrier blocks. So just like that. Um, then we're going to go ahead and go up again, or rather, actually, sorry, back from this barrier block and then it's going to be a button on top of it and then a barrier block that's going to come off each one of these end rods and then a button on the side of those barrier blocks so it's going to basically create our cabling there uh, between the uh, pagoda and superstructure and then the rear mass after that's all done we just very simply need to go ahead and complete our cabling that's going to go all the way back and connect us to the stern of the ship so for this we're going to, go ahead and place down two barrier blocks back from these end rods and we're going to go ahead and then drop down and do a row of three. Just drop down row of three. Then uh, we want to go ahead and go toward the inside by one. So it's going to uh, work its way toward the inside there. We'll wait for those to disappear and it should look like that. 
And then we're going to drop it down again. We have one, two, three, four this time. And again, one, two, three, four. Then we're going to drop down again. And we're going to have this time a another row of four. So we have one, two, three, four. And over here, same thing. One, two, three, four. And then again, we're going to drop down like this uh, by one on both sides. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a block here in the middle. And then we're going to go back one and two more. And then we just want to go ahead and go two off of this iron bar. And for your cabling here, to go ahead and get this set up, uh, we're going to place down two buttons on top of these ones. Then we're going to place down two buttons on the sides. And then on tops of these two. Then two buttons on the side, two buttons on top, two buttons on the side, uh, two on top. Then again, two buttons on the side. And for this right here, we're going to place this one on the inside, like that. And then we're going to place down two on top, and then two buttons on the side. So same thing over here. We have two buttons on the side, two buttons on top, and then we're going to go to the inside here. Uh, and we're going to have our um, one button on the inside, and then we're going to have the button on the outside here. Then two more buttons um, on the outside, then on the outside, two on top, two on the outside, then on top. And then we have the one already on top there, and then two on the outside for those last two. And that's going to complete the cabling that goes all the way back to, from that mass, all the way back to the stern. And once you have that all done right there, that's going to wrap up my tutorial here for layers A through 13. And uh, the tutorial here for the IJN Congo, Congo class battleship. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for it. This can be the thing from the side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does appear to your social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to for every project you guys are working on. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2x4, and I'll see you guys next time.